Number one says the videography team entered a contest and won a monetary prize of $1,350. Which expression represents how much money each person would get if there were X people on the team? So we have a total of $1,350. And then we want to divide that into equal chunks for every team member. So you want to take the money divided by the number of team members. And another way to write the division symbol is a fraction. So 1350 on top divided by X on the bottom. Number two, to support a local senior citizen center, a student club sent a flyer home to N students. So N, and I'm just going to write students next to it since it went on to the other line. So um, and students in the school. The flyer said, please bring in money to support the Senior Citizen Center. Paper, money, and coins are accepted, and their goal is to raise T dollars. So we want the total to be T dollars. Then we want to match each quantity to an expression, an equation, or an e inequality that describes it. So we've got A says the dollar amount the club would have reached um, if they reached half of their goal. So remember their goal is T dollars. So we don't like actually know a dollar amount, but we're calling it T. So if they were to have reached half of T, they would do half times T. And one half we know as a decimal is 0 0.05. So we're gonna have 0 0.05 or 50% of their goal. That's number two that matches with A. Part B, the dollar amount the club would have if every student at school donated 50 cents. And this is every student. And remember, the students are N. And if every student donated 50 cents, so 50 cents per student. So we would multiply 0.5 times however many students there were. So 0.5 times N or number 4 matches with B. Part C, the dollar amount the club could donate if they made $50 more than their goal. So their goal is T, and if they made $50 more than that, they would have their goal plus 50 more dollars. So that we can see here at number one. So part C matches with number one. D, the dollar amount the club would still need to raise to reach its goal after every student at the school, school donated 50 cents. So we know the goal is T. And then if every student raises 50 cents, remember that's from um, part B, so 0.5 times N. So this is how much money would be raised so far. So to figure out what's left, we would take our total goal and subtract the amount that we've earned so far. So whatever our total is minus however much the students have raised. Um, and we can see that here in number five. So then that leaves number three um, for E. And let's just take a look at it. So this one says the dollar amount the club would have if half of the students at the school each gave 50 cents. So now we have half of the students, okay, giving 50 cents each. So we would have half of the students giving 50 cents each. So we basically have half of this. And if you multiply those together, half of half is 0.25. So then that's gonna match number Three. Number three, each of 10 students in a baking club made two chocolate cakes um, for a fundraiser. They all used the same recipe using C cups of flour in total for all the cakes. Write an expression rep that represents the total amount of flour required for one cake. So we have 10 students, right? So 10 students, and they each bake two cakes, OK? 
Okay, so then we have times two cakes per student, right? So that gives us 20 total cakes. And then we wanna figure out how much flour was used for one. So we know that there were C cups of flour used for all 20. So in total, we had this many cups of flour and we wanna divide that amongst the 20 cakes evenly. So then this would be the expression per cake. So the total divided into 20 equal cakes. Number four, a student club started a fundraising effort to support an animal rescue organization. The club sent an information flyer to N students in the school. It says we're welcoming donations of any amount, including cha any change you could spare. Their goal is to raise T dollars and to donate to a cat shelter and a dog shelter. So match each expression to an equation inequality, or inequality um, that describes it. So the dollar amount the club would have if they reached one fourth of their goal. So remember the goal is T, so we have one fourth of that goal. So we would take one fourth times whatever the goal was in this case T. So that matches number two. B, the dollar amount the club would have if every student at school so if every student at school donated a quarter to the cause. Um, and so you, in, if we look at these answers, they're all written in fractions. So we can do one quarter as a fraction times the number of students, which we're calling N in this problem. So if you remember here, they said N students. So we would have one quarter times N, that would be our expression. We see that down at number five. Part C, the dollar amount the club could donate to the cat shelter if they reached their goal and gave a quarter of the total to the dog shelter. So they one fourth of the total is already given away to the dog shelter. So one fourth of the total earnings went to the dog shelter the remaining three fourths would be for the cat shelter then. So this would be what would remain out of the total since one fourth, one fourth and three fourths totals 100%. So three fourths of the total would go to the dog shelter. That matches number four. Part D, the dollar amount the club would still need to raise to reach its goal after every student at the school donated a quarter. So we've got every student donating a quarter, which we already looked at is one fourth of N from part B, how much of the goal remains. So our goal is T dollars, and then we would subtract off what we've earned so far to get our remaining amount that we still need to raise. So the total, minus what we've raised already. And that would give us T minus one fourth N, which matches number three. So then what does that leave? Number one for part E. So let's check it out just to make sure. So part E says the dollar amount the club would have if three fourths of the students each gave 50 cents. So we have three fourths of the students, right? So we would have three fourths times the number of students and then each gave 50 cents. Remember this stuff was all in fractions. So 50 cents as a fraction is one half. So it's half of a dollar. So three fourths of the students each gave 50 cents. So three fourths times N and then we would have multiplying by one half for that. And that does match number one here. Number five, a softball team is ordering pizza to eat at their tournament. They plan to order cheese pizzas that cost $6 each and four topping pizzas that cost $10 each. They order C cheese pizzas and they order F 
four topping pizzas. So F is with our 10 and C is with our $6 pizza. Write an expression for the total cost. So if we're gonna buy C cheese pizzas and they each cost $6, however many of them we buy, we would multiply by six. So six times however many cheese pizzas we buy is our total. And then for the four topping pizzas, however many of those we buy each cost us $10. So we would be doing 10 times however many pizzas we buy, in this case F, and then our total of cost, we would add those two quantities together. So however much we spent on cheese pizzas, plus however much we spent on four topping pizzas to get us our expression, and that matches option C. We can see that the six is with the C, the 10 is with the F, where part D is backwards. Number six, the value of coins in the pockets of several students is recorded. What is the mean of the values? So mean, remember, means that we wanna add these numbers up. So if we total these up by just adding all of these values, we get 375. And then there were 10 total students. So then we take the total divided by the number of data points, or in this case, the number of students. And 375 divided by 10 would give us 37.5 cents was the mean value of change in each of these students' pockets. Number seven, the dot plot displays the number of hits a baseball team made in several games. And in fact, I'm going to write under here, if we count up all of these dots, it's 20 games. The distribution is skewed to the left because we see this data point way over here to the left, kind of out away from everything else. If the game with three hits is considered to be recorded in error, so this point here, if we decide that that one was an error, it could be removed from the data set so that we could better look at the data. What would happen to the mean if we removed this value? So since this value is lower than the data points, if we were to remove it, that would increase the mean. So the mean would increase. And if you calculated out this um, mean, so if you wanted to come up with how much it actually increases, you would want to add together all of these 20 games. And if you were to do that, you would get a total, um, an original total with the three in there of 178. And then we would divide by 20. That would give us 8.9. And then our new mean, if we took this three out, now our total is going to decrease by three and our value points are decreasing by one because now we only have 19 points. And if you do 175 divided by 19, you get about 9.21. So you can see that the, the mean increased there from 8.9 to 9.21. And then what happens to the median? So the median, remember, is the middle. So if we've got 20, our middle is going to split it to 10 and 10 points. So if we still have this in here, if we count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, your median would be here at nine. So the original median is nine. And then if we remove this data point, now our tenth value will be our median because we'll have nine data points here, nine data points here, and then the middle one because nine and nine is 18 plus this one in the middle. So if we count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we see now our median is still at nine. So the median ends up being unchanged. It's nine in both cases. And we know that the median is less impacted by outliers as the mean is. So this problem supports that, that we see that the mean actually changed quite significantly, um, but the median was unchanged. 
Then number eight says a set of data has a mean average deviation of zero. And one, one of the data values is 14. What can you say about the other data values? So remember the MAD is mean average deviation. And it is a measure of variability. So this is saying that there's no variability in the data. So a MAD whoops, of zero means there is no variability in the data. So if one, if we know one value is 14, then all of the other values are also 14. Since there's no variability, everything is the same in that data set.